Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a classic wooden toolbox. So for those of you who've been following along with my Jake's Toolbox project, I made a box of tools for my son for his 21st birthday, and this is the final video in that series that documents the whole build. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss the building of the actual toolbox itself. The project here was to make a box resembling the sort of tool chest that, you know, a machinist or maybe even a carpenter would have used uh, a century ago or so. So it's made from box jointed oak. It'll contain three drawers plus a little bin type thing at the top with a lid. By the way, because of the length of this particular project, I'll probably break it into a couple of different videos. All right, let's get started. The project was made mostly from half-inch oak boards that I purchased from, I don't know, Home Depot or Lowe's. I can't even remember which. I did no planing or joining. I just spent a bunch of time sorting through the bin for the straightest lumber so I didn't end up with any warped or twisted wood. I'll begin by gluing up the panels for the sides. My feeling is that with a project like this, you're generally better off using glued sections rather than cutting slabs to shape, especially with really thin lumber like this. There's less chance of warping and twisting than if you have a big old piece. I kept everything flat by setting it up on my table saw, separated by some paper to absorb the squeeze out and avoid glue in the panels to the table. Nothing fancy here, I just made everything a little oversized, glued it up with tight bond 3, and clamped it. As with most of my projects on YouTube, anybody who supports the channel at any level on Patreon can pick up plans for this build on my Patreon page. Link in the cards and description. Once the panels were dried, I measured them and then used a slap together little sled to rip them to length on my table saw. The top and bottom panels will fit into insets in the side, back, and front panels. So I used the table saw to mill these steps into the panels. I could have used a router later in the process to avoid this, but I kind of hate routers, so table saw it is. Then it was time to make the box joints. I won't make a deep dive into this process since you can find other videos that cover it exhaustively, but the basic idea is that I set up my table saw with a dado blade, then I made a jig with a little finger that exactly fits the cavity sawed out by the dado. It's got to fit nice and tightly or you can get a stack tolerance problem that will cause your joints to eventually creep out of register. But you'll see how this works. You're basically just picking it up, dunk, 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 moving it over each time and cutting a new section. You want to take a bunch of time to set this up really carefully. The actual cutting itself goes pretty quickly, but if you screwed it up when you set it up, you're in trouble. Obviously, the depth of the cut should be equal to or just minutely larger than the width of the lumber. If it's any deeper than that, of course, you're going to make these little fingers stick out too far. I assume it also goes without saying that you want to do a bunch of tests until you're totally satisfied that everything's working correctly before you start cutting the actual for real pieces. I should mention that I made a rookie mistake by not screwing the little jig to the face of the sled. I just clamped the hell out of it and figured, oh, that's going to be fine. But on my final, final, final series of cuts, it slipped probably just a couple thousandths of an inch. But that was enough so that one corner of the box didn't really fit all that great. I was able to compensate and backfill and 
chisel out a little bit and stuff so that I was eventually able to get it work but it created a lot of extra work and a careful examination of that one joint would show that uh, shall we say it was less than beautiful I actually ended up taking off all these little fingers along the front section of the box and then replacing that with little strips of fascia that would match the grain of the drawers you'll see how that works later so the full complement of pieces was composed of two identical side panels, a bottom and top panel, a full back panel, and then a partial front panel which would be above the drawers and would form the front face of the lid. The bin or lid section will have an eighth inch birch ply bottom. So I saw it in a slot for that drawer bottom or section bottom, whatever you want to call it, to slide into. Now it's possible to do this using a little saw stop so the saw won't cut all the way from one side to the other, preserving the exterior of the box at the entry and exit point. But that really seemed a little excessive. So I just sawed straight across each panel. Now, of course, these saw cuts created tiny little gaps on each corner that I would ultimately need to fill, but that really seemed easier than diddling around endlessly with some kind of silly jig. Now, let's try fit everything together. Like I said, it'll have a lid, but the way I'm going to do this is make the box as a full unit and then saw that lid off later. You can also see where I've glued in little fascia strips here that'll flank the drawers. Earlier I'd cut in all the little dovetails there, but now they've been cut off and replaced with this fascia piece. I also used my CNC mill to rebate a pocket for a brass nameplate on the top panel. Apparently I forgot to turn on the camera when I did that though. Now it's time to turn to the drawers. All right, we're gonna wrap up this first part of the video here. I'll post the concluding video about the uh, box in a couple of days. There'll be a link in the cards and descriptions as soon as it's complete. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. WalterSorrelsBlades.com